ago, my plane from Reno landed at the International Airport in Inglewood. My friend Cheryl Corwin had left his car for me and a message. Get some rest and make this trip a vacation. I admit his advice sounded good. Some people like the snow. I prefer Beverly Hills and sun. I had wired the Sunset Towers of my arrival and I was looking forward to a holiday. Welcome to Beverly Hills, Mr. Lanyard, and uh, congratulations. What did I do, win a door prize? Oh, she signed for the both of you. Well, that sounds intriguing, but isn't it a bit illegal? Of course not, Mr. Lanyard. The law requires only one of you to register. Oh. And just who is this helpful she? My, you are a newlywed. It's your wife, of course. What? It's perfectly all right. She explained that it wasn't for publication. Did she also explain how we could get married without my knowing about it? Hmm? Never mind, I'll ask her myself. You'll find her in the bridal suite, Mr. Lanyard. 312? You better wait here with the bags. Someone was kidding. At least I hope they were kidding. Because if they weren't, it might be trouble. lovely. Whoever was responsible for her being here at least had an eye for beauty. Mrs. Lanyard? Michael. Darling. My plane arrived an hour early. Oh, darling, I'm so happy you're here. I believe you. I believe you. I'm tempted to be happy myself. <laughs> Why not? Unless you're unhappy you married me. Are you, Michael? You know, you're good. I can do better than that. I think you're wonderful. The most wonderful husband a girl ever had. Well, that's quite a tribute for a bachelor. Ex-bachelor, my darling. For nearly 41 hours now. Oh, no, no. It deserves something, but uh, let's save the bubbles to celebrate the joke, huh? Joke? Oh, come on, honey. It's a wonderful gag, but let's have the tagline. And which one of my idiot friends dreamed it up? Dreamed it up? Michael, you're tired from that long airplane trip. And you just lie down here and get some rest. Aren't you uh, overplaying it a little? Tell me, uh, do you have a name or do I just whistle? Bonnie Jean Douglas. Now, Bonnie Jean Lanyard. Mrs. Bonnie Jean Lanyard. No, Mrs. Michael Lanyard. I like that much better. Mm. Oh, I see we were married in Reno. Someone went to a lot of trouble. This looks absolutely authentic. Well, it better be. No, I, uh, I remember being in Reno. But from there on, it's pretend I don't remember a thing, huh? Where did we meet? Why, in San Francisco. You had come in from Chicago to visit your Chinese friend, Tai Ling. We met right afterwards at the Anderson's party. Michael, are you sure you feel all right? Hardly. I'm beginning to feel married. Shall I go on? <laughs> Please don't. Bonnie took hours to dress. The clerk had looked surprised when I'd taken another apartment for myself. I explained I wasn't quite adjusted to being married. He smiled, but it was sickly. We had started for the garden club when Bonnie said it was too early for dinner. She explained that being a bride was exciting. She wanted to do the Sunset Strip first. I figured this was all part of a gag, so I said it was a great idea. It was only a matter of time I knew before Bonnie would admit the joke and take me to the friend who dreamed up this whole idea. 
Anyway, the evening was young and Bonnie was displaying a sense of humor by keeping up a pretense of being married to me. I suggested our first stop be Larry Finley's. I'd introduce Bonnie to Larry Finley. I'd waited for him to admit he was responsible for the gag. But Larry was so sincere in his congratulations, I felt he knew nothing about it. As we left Findlay's and headed for La Rose, I thought that Bruno, who operated the place, might have the answer. said he'd never seen Bonnie before, and I believed him. On the way to Mocambo, I played like a quiz master. And for every question I asked, Bonnie had another of those two right answers. The only thing I learned was that she knew everything about me, from my taste in ties to which side of my face I shaved first. And while we talked with Charlie Morrison, owner of the Mocambo, Bonnie hadn't stopped playing Mrs. Lanyard for even a second. I told Bonnie it was time for us to have dinner and that the Garden Club would be our next stop. She said she was tired and that after all it was a private club and likely at this hour jammed. I reminded her again that Caradoc was a friend of mine and I was sure we'd get a table. important personage around here, aren't you? Well, Major D's are always nice to the owner's friend. Hello, Caradoc. You've got a lot of nerve. My goodness, I'm going to have to introduce myself. I'm Michael's wife, Mr. Caradoc, and I'm so happy to meet you. I've heard so much about you. you got very bad taste in husbands. What's the matter with you, Caradoc? She's only kidding. Don't you think you're rubbing it in, Lanyard? What? This club is for members only. I'm afraid you'll have to find someplace else to eat. Good night, Tom. And I don't want to see you around here again. Is that clear? And I don't want to see this again, ever. Now, get out. Wait a minute. Where did you get this? Conversation's over. It's time for you to leave. made a mistake about my friend. Leaving the garden club, I tried to get back into the spirit of things, but I couldn't make it. Even the kick of having a make-believe bride was lost. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with Caradoc, nor could I understand how he had my medallion. Then all the nagging questions in my mind began to crystallize into one obvious fact. Bonnie's pretense of being my wife had gone beyond the point of being a joke, so I headed for the Sunset Towers. It was time for Bonnie to start talking. Time to slow down the merry-go-round. Now it's high time for our toast. I'll settle for some truth. Michael, don't look so grim. After our toast, you can grill me to your heart's content. and happiness, darling. Michael, our toast won't come true unless you drink all of it. Huh. Now, how about
of that truth. Truth? Yeah. If there's one thing a bachelor never forgets, it's when he stops being one. Give it to me straight. What's the connection between you and Caradoc? Your friend? Why, nothing. You want me to wring it out of you? You're the only person who could have taken my medallion and given it to Caradoc. Darling. You don't think I'm a pickpocket, do you? All right. Let's see if Caradoc has the answer. Hello? Oh, sorry, operator, I dropped the phone. What time is it? 12.30? Thank you. Michael, dear, my benefactor. <laughs> told me I'd fallen for one of the oldest tricks in the world, a loaded glass of wine. Bonnie had cleared out, but that was no surprise. I knew one thing. I wanted to meet her again. I wasn't sure when, but I was sure it would be sometime. Give me the desk. This is Lanyard. Where's the girl? The clerk corrected me. He told me my wife had checked out some time ago. I asked if anyone had met her, but he said no, she'd taken a taxi. I said thanks and started for my room to change clothes. I had a feeling I was in for a long day. Beverly Hill. A place to relax, get some sun. Only in my case, someone had other ideas. to go on was Caradoc's anger. It figured somewhere along the line we both had been taken by Bonnie. I remembered how she tried to talk me out of going to Caradoc's place. I remembered she'd call me right after our first meeting and said she needed a few hours to have her hair done. Then while I was going along with her story, she'd had plenty of time to have seen Caradoc and given him my medallion. The question was, what was it all about? I didn't have the answer, but I was positive Caradoc had. The club was locked. I headed for the pool because more than likely Caradoc was getting some sun. Why, right, Caradoc, what's it all about? Why don't you go away and let me get some sun? How much patience do you think I have? Where's the girl? The girl? You mean she ran away with the dough? <laughs> That's wonderful. That's what I call poetic justice. I'm not a mind reader. What though? You sound as though you expect me to pay off again. Look, stop playing games. You owe me a couple of favors. That's why you're still alive. You're the only man in the world that could blackmail me and still live. What do you mean, blackmail? Oh, Lanyard, stop kidding. I've known you for too long. You know, I got out of jail and came back to this town. I started fresh. I opened up this club. Ten years, I haven't even stepped on a line across the pavement. That's not news. Maybe not. But you sent that dame here with your medallion. She gave me your message, and I paid her off. How much did you pay her? One hundred thousand dollars in small bills. And at first, I thought I'd kill you. I realized you were right. If this town ever found out about my past, I'd be through. So it was cheaper to pay you off. You ought to know me better than that. You sit tight. If I'm lucky, you'll get your money back. 
Well, I won't hold my breath. I'll keep in touch. I had a feeling that things had moved so quickly for Bonnie that she must still be in town making plans to leave. I checked all the airline and railroad offices in Beverly Hills, but I wasn't lucky. I drove out to the airport to see if she'd made a direct reservation. Hi, Cookie. Hi, how are you? How you been, doll? Nice seeing you. Thanks. You can help me. I'm looking for Miss Dawson. I think she's on flight 362. Douglas, I'd be with the I'm sorry, Mr. Leonard. We... There's no Miss Douglas. How many women passengers on the flight? Let's see, there's three. One is a Mrs. Hitchcock, but you've ridden with her before. She's the one who snores. Uh, her I know. Go on. Well, there's a Miss Darling. Well, that sounds like a brunette and... Uh... No, blonde and... Oh, what about the other one? Don't know. This was a phone reservation for two seats. A Miss Jean Dawson and a Ray Fish. Jean Dawson. Jean. Bonnie Jean Dawson Douglas. Yeah, it might be. You know where she's staying? All I have is a phone number. Crestview 67429. 67429. Be my guest. Customers like you, we have to please. Thanks. Hello, Valley Cottages. Valley Cottages? Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong number. Thanks, Cookie. The Valley Cottages were located on the outskirts of Beverly Hills. If I was lucky, I'd find my fake bride, the cause of all my problems. Ray Fish was someone I knew and disliked. His was a peculiar occupation. He would remember something you'd done. And for enough money, he'd forget about it. There's a word for it, blackmail. I was ready to admit he and Bonnie made a tough team. I called Caradoc, told him to meet me, and added, all things being equal, his money would still be warm. I hoped I was right. was wrong of me to give you that drink. That's only half of it. I don't like being taken for a patsy. You see, I spoke to Caradoc. He can afford it, Michael. There's enough for both of us. No. I'll take all of it. Right back to Caradoc where it belongs. Thank you. It's in the next room. Here's 50,000. Uh, all of it. Oh, you don't have all of it, do you? Do you? No. No, that's all I have. Where's Ray Fish? Ray Fish? Never heard of him. No. This is his kind of a job. Case a guy well, and snap the picture. Where is he? Here. Listen, Lanyard, I don't like you. That makes us even. Let's get out of here, Ray. He knows the whole score. That's just it, sweetheart. He's the kind of guy who'd follow us around the world. Before we grab that plane, we gotta take care of our pigeon. That gun seems to give you a lot of courage. But you better hold it steadier. It's going to be a real pleasure when I pull this trigger. 
I don't think you have nerve enough to kill me. Okay, tough guy. Walk over to me. Slowly. Keep your hands high. For years, Lanyard, I've hated you. You got me chased out of Detroit. Same thing happened in New York. Now it's reversed. You're finished. Turn around. Go on. Turn around. <laughs> Lot of last motion. It was worth it. <laughs> it's like I said, clipping someone I can stand. Murder I don't like. Give me an hour's start and I'll leave Fisher with you. It might be an idea. Tell me one thing. When you dreamed up your little scheme to clip Caradoc, why did you pick me? I figured he'd pay fast when the hustle came from you. You did a good job of research on me. It took me three months, all the money I could dig up. I figured my only chance was to make you curious enough to play along for at least one evening. I guess maybe you were right. Now give me that gun. I said I don't like murder. One step more and I'll change my mind. You don't have any choice. You threw that one up from the floor. It was a real pleasure. Here's some of your money. The rest of it's around someplace. Mike, I'm sorry I blew my cart before. If I hadn't been so mad, I'd have realized it was a frame. Get me the police. Beverly Hills, just the place to get rid of your worries and relax. Not always very much sun, perhaps, but it does have compensations for a bachelor. And at this point, no one can blame me if the most confirmed bachelor in the world is Michael Lanyon. <laughs>